but it becomes hell when my attention is on my thoughts that drags me out of here into another place or another time. And it is heaven when I'm simply here. And no matter how dull or boring here can look, because here sometimes can be boring. And naturally, the mind would like to project into another place or future to drag you out of here with a promissory note that it would be better. How many times you've done that to yourself or right now you're doing it to yourself? How many years have you lived that you've played this game with yourself? Here is never good. Now is not good. And it's somewhere else. Or some other time. And what happens is you miss. You miss now. You miss here. And the lifetime goes by. And sometimes for some of us, if we're lucky, somehow through the grace, the grace comes and fishes us out from the world of ignorance, from being lost. So this is my suggestion, is practice your natural state of being which actually doesn't require any practice because that's how, who you are, by learning or refusing or disengaging your, yourself from going anywhere else or projecting that your happiness is going to be somewhere else or some other time. And bring your attention here, hang out here. Let's examine here. Have you ever tried? Have you ever given a try? A fair try. Of simply being here. I know you do it when we're together because the field is very powerful and sucks you in. I know that for a lot of you, because we've been together for a number of years and we've seen each other and we've done work together and, and you speak to me, I know. But you tell me when you're with me and you come to the academy, this happens for you. And I'm telling you that without coming to me and without coming to the academy, that is your true nature. You have already got it inside and around you. It's here. The reason you don't tap into it on a normal basis is because you don't recognize it and you don't believe it. You think because of the conditioning that we have, it's somewhere else with someone else. You don't recognize that every time in your life you've been happy, every time you've been in a blissful state, every time that, and that can happen every day, and everyone has experienced it. Don't take me wrong. This is not just spiritual people. Every single human being on this planet 
they have moments that they feel blissed out because in those moments they're here and present. But they're projecting it on getting a good news that they got something, they got the object of their desire and finally they got what they wanted and now they feel amazing. It's not that. It's because somehow you disengage from anything else, anywhere else, and your attention comes towards your own self and you're here. And all of a sudden you, the expansion happens because now you got the object of your desire and now you say, oh, okay, wow, I got it. I finally got her. I finally got him. I finally got the house. I finally got the contract. I finally got, now you chill out. And in that chilling out, what happens is the field expands, the space opens up and your mind's not engaged with trying to go anywhere, even if it's for one hour, for a half an hour, for one day, one night. Finally, he, you and him reunited. Finally, you saw your children. Finally, you're, you got the house, you got the contract, you got whatever. Finally, you got what you wanted or you arrive in the vacation place. Now you're just letting go and you're relaxing. And then that space opens, you shift from your head to your heart and love appears and you feel bliss. But this bliss is always here and it's unconditional. However, in your mind, you've been programmed to believe that it's conditioned. It's subject to something going your way. But I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with things going your way or not going your way. It's always here because I experience it all the time. And I have not a holy man to get to it. I didn't do things correctly. I wasn't vegetarian. I had sex. I did drugs. I booze. I didn't do all the things that all typical meditators and seekers of the truth do. I didn't do any of those things. I did a little bit here and there, but I broke all the rules and I came to this. So it's not even following the rules or not. I'm being as honest as I can be with you. It has nothing to do with being vegetarian or doing yoga or not. It's simply learning or unconditioning from this madness that you're involved with, that you think it's normal because you always have to worry. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm worried about what's going to happen. I'm worried about well, number one is you worried about yourself. It's the number, your number one worry is the, the fear of death. You're worried that you're going to die. That's number one. That's the number one thing. Everything else is after that. No, I'm worried about my kids. No, no, no. You're worried about yourself first. You're, you're afraid of death. And based on that fear, everything else comes. And then you're worried about lack of self-control because you're worried about what's gonna happen in the world. 